Sophia, the mother of the Demiurge. The last video I made about the Nephilim was um, used by Soul on Ice, um, Jason, on Instagram. And he put up fabulous graphics to what I was saying about the Nephilim and the many different layers of what were called angels, except we found out that those angels were in fact reptilian bird hybrid groups. I'm going to give some more background to that today because what we have to find out is if this mother figure, Sophia, was responsible in her creations. So many of the posts that I have put up on my YouTube channel this week have been about the astrology that's coming in the next year in which Saturn and Nessus will make an applying conjunction in Pisces a year from now. So we're in May of 2023. And the particular post that I put up had Lucifer conjunct the sun. It was actually Jupiter, asteroid Lucifer, which is number 1930, and the sun. So if Sophia was not responsible in her creations, that's the template that this whole simulation carries. So as above, so below. My purpose in making this video is for us to understand who is this mythological creature called Sophia. And I am going to use uh, the Book of Enoch and the Nag Hammadi texts and my own observations. So the story of Sophia that I understand is that she was innocent. <laughs> she self-fertilized <clears throat> a creation and that she was the fallen goddess, meaning that she was looking at true creator, the primordial oneness, and she was looking up at this oneness and decided without a divine partner to self-fertilize. And when she did that, coming off of her pleroma were the multitude of demons and they're very clearly described in the Nag Hammadi texts as rep reptilians. And the first among them that was created was Yaldabaoth. My original version of this story, without reading any of the texts, was that she surrounded kind of this fractured being that was the fracture when source was creating all the real beautiful natural environments that are out there and she surrounded the fractured part and then Yaldabaoth created actually the steroma it's called the steroma meaning a copy an image that replicated a simulated reality of what source was creating as natural biological environments. So this particular environment that we're in here, a system environment based on geometries, was created by the Demiurge, something that self-fertilized. And that thing, according to the mythology, was feminine, and her name was Sophia. She allegedly came from the Orion stars, which makes perfect sense as to why the big monuments on this simulated realm are aligned to Orion. They have stationed us in this cube-like environment that then sits firm in relationship to that mother figure, who I'm going to suggest was a demonic being herself, because you just let's look at that. Let's just be reasonable about this. If she created this whole demonic demiurge simulated reality, 
say she was a cow, let's just use something like livestock. If that cow created a whole bunch of weird reptilian hybrids that wanted to be gods, you would not let that cow to continue to breed. Okay, I was raised on a dairy farm. Um, you would select that group and take them out of the breeding environment. So what's going on here is the template of this irresponsible mother carries through. It carries through to you and I who think that we're just innocent in our creations. In order to change that, we have to get really responsible in our creations. And because you are in a scripted environment based on the Archonic planets, of which apparently there are 36 Archons, so not the original seven that I spoke about with the seven eons and the seven planets that were the Archons, Apparently, there are 36, and according to a video that I listened to with Terrence McKenna, he said that Sophia was always referred to as the 36th Archon, and the most fallen, meaning the lowest of the Archons. And then somehow she got assigned to being an eon, which really is just a time, like an eon is a time, a time, um, construct from the archons because outside of the simulation there is no time so the eon or the archon to me are this they're interchangeable so apparently the priesthood during the baroque period all referred to sophia as the lowest of the archons meaning the 36th archon and in fact in the book of enoch First Enoch 42, it says that she descended and that the humans um, were not willing to take her wisdom. And then she went back up to her heavenly abode with her demons. So First Enoch 42 says that she came and she came among men and found no dwelling place. So wisdom, right? Sophia is the Greek word for wisdom. Then took her seat among the angels. And we know that angels are reptilian. So I'm going to read directly from the Nag Hammadi text that shows that these angel things are <laughs> demons. They're reptilian demons. And, and they're not intelligent which then comes into what did she do next? She then allegedly blew some of her dreaming into this creation. And I believe that we were then um, the food for these demons, but they were supposed to stay separate from us in a separate dimension, which is called the heavens. And then there was a big invasion because as I said, <laughs> and I'm going to show you this right here. What was the invasion? You can make screenshots of this, including all of my references from where I'm getting this material from the Book of Enoch and the Book of the Watchers. Of course, those were not included in what we call the Bible, because then we would all know that this thing here that we're calling God is a giant demonic reptile. And he even, you know, someone said, read Isaiah 24 or 25. And he, he's like such a, a insecure God that he says, if you don't behave and, and love me as God, I'm going to smote you. <laughs> just, I just like, 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 okay. I mean, I throw a tick in the fire every once in a while. I smote that fire, that tick, you know. But what an insecure God to say, you better, you know, experience me as your God or else I'm going to smote you and I'm going to level the mountain and I'm going to dry up the rivers and, you know, all of these threats from this demonic thing. It's not very intelligent. 
So what we are apparently is we're a food source and we're a fuel for this simulation. And those things were not supposed to come down and breed with the women of Earth, but the Slavonic apocalypse, that's what that is called, it was an apocalypse where they broke through the vapor canopy and it was called the Asuric um, invasion. And they broke through and it is um, apparently in uh, the chapter 18 of Enoch, the detailed report of the group's transgression were given in chapter 18. The text mentions the angelic descent on Mount Hermon leading to subsequent corruption, read rape, <laughs> of humanity and the procreation of the race of giants, read Nephilim. <laughs> See the Book of the Watchers. This particular text refers to the angelic insurrection that took place. They were prisoners in the second heaven and are, in fact, the watchers who violated the barrier separating heaven and earth by taking human wives and fathering bastards read giants. And you can get that at marquette.edu um, slash maqom slash watch 55.html. Now, don't think that I can get these links up, people, because I already tried to post that on Facebook this morning, and I could not. I mean, I was just going to put up a picture of my written notes with that link, and I could not. So please don't ask me for the links, because I want you to know, they're blocking me all the time, and people say, where's the link for this, and where's the link for that? I, I have a very hard time getting anything to post on um, the various media platforms, so you just have to look this stuff up yourself. Please don't believe me. Please look it up, and you have to ask the right questions and get to the right place because, of course, if you just put in was Sophia an archon, they're not going to come up with that unless you get this book, Sophia and the Archons, which was written in 2013. It's, you know, you got to read it with some discernment because she thinks Sophia is a goddess and Sophia should return. But they just printed this up for me on May 8th of 2023. So you can get this book, which has a lot of the references, because it's very hard to wade through what they want us to think. Just like the Bible, you know, like, please, people, if you don't realize that that is a demon in that, in that um, Bible, you are missing it. I mean, this is a totally insecure reptile who's going to smote you, smite you, spite you. If you don't think of that as God, where are we to be in a place like that? Where the women get raped and then everyone gets smoted? <laughs> I love that word, you know, like, I'm going to smote this tick on my dog right now. I'm going to throw it into the fire. I mean, this is the kind of realm that we're in. So I want you to rethink a lot of the very popular uh, YouTubers and authors out there who are making Sophia into some kind of a goddess. Sophia is a demon and she is the original like fallen one who self-fertilized and when she self-fertilized she created this whole simulation. That's the mother of the Matrix, Sophia. She's the mother of the Demiurge. So I often will get people, the New Agey people who are totally brainwashed, putting, oh, but Sophia's returning. Just speak positively. We need to bring more light to this realm. I'm going, I don't want Sophia to come back. And whatever I have ever wondered about Sophia was just like this really baseline, oh, she's Gaia Sophia, she's wisdom, she's coming back, they're naming asteroids after her now. I'm not summoning Sophia. I'm collapsing this whole thing. My project is to collapse this entire demonic construct. And not by 
thinking I'm going to bring in beautiful children who are going to do it for me. And that seems to be the template of Sophia, that she was going to fertilize herself and give birth to these creatures that called themselves gods. And unfortunately, I had to share a lot of the Cytronic um, videos, the neuroscience videos, like these kids don't have a chance, folks. If you take responsibility for your creation, then you're stepping out of this demonic mother principle of self-fertilization and creating of the demi-urge. We have to do it. Please do not think that next year you're going to have a beautiful golden child and then it's going to create the golden age. The only planet <laughs> that I'm watching now is Pluto going in and out of Aquarius until 2044. Saturn and Nessus will conjoin next year and then Neptune and Saturn will enter Aries and I don't see anything good coming right through 2044, folks. We're in the nihilistic eon. So of the eons, which I've already spoken, the archons, the eons, you go through these phases where the planets, which are archons, are right now is they're in that nihilistic phase. And I spoke about the millennials coming in with Pluto conjunct Nessus, and I put up all of the um, aerosols that are spraying the nanofibers, the silk fibers that are crawling through you that are creating the singularity with this demonic mother, Sophia. I don't want to be raised up into the cloud <laughs> in some rapture. Uh, to this demonic Sophia. That's called the singularity. I want to collapse this whole thing. Okay, so just look at her whole storyline. It, it's like she then had this redeemer who was apparently a Christ incarnate, but apparently he was holographic or something because something as good as him couldn't come into this dimension. Except remember, He's a Nephilim, people. He came from a woman who had sex with an angel, which is a reptilian bird being. And then he allegedly came in and allegedly was a blood sacrifice. Do you see the template? That when you create something here, you're offering this template of a sacrificed child, a martyred child. And yes, I have had children. And I am doing what I can, since my children were very young, to inform them to not have children. Do you hear that? I mean, the main thing that I have been telling my daughters is do not have children. What if everyone just stopped having children? Well, of course, they would do what they could to make us have children, which is exactly what's going on right now. Do you notice the legislation that's happening right now? Because many of my clients are refusing to bring in a child who will be another sacrifice to the demiurge. Were their food? Were their fuel? See, do you understand that? And where are we exactly? So I want to show you another screenshot that I made from a man who's a remote viewer. Now, the Gnostics were just remote viewers, okay? That, that's what a Gnostic is, okay? So people are going, oh, the Gnostics. The Gnostics were some ancient cult. Well, no. The Gnostics are here and now, and they are explorers and remote viewers. And this guy uh, from Moksha, I don't know what his name is, said that they remote viewed all of these cubes. 
where? Stuck, stationary in one particular part of a galactic arm. And there's not just this simulation, there's many simulations, which goes into those stories by Philip Pullman about the subtle knife, how they could cut through one simulation and then be in another simulation. Look at it again. This is where we are. We're inside of a cube. Now all the mathematicians and physicists and stuff are going to criticize my, my material. Look, I just watched another video this week with a new paper um, from the the quantum physics people who say that particles don't exist unless we see them. So unless we see them, the particle does not exist. There's a possibility, but we're, this is completely holographic. So the other piece is, I think that part of the design of the human meat suit is that all of this would look like this, and I've actually seen this also. It's black with white lines. I've seen this when I've come from the void. I've also seen that. Um, and then we are, what, what is the weird word? The primordial veneration of the protoplast in the paradigmatic Adamic story where Satan and his angels refused to bow down before the first human. I don't know what we are, but apparently these angel things are extremely envious of us because we are the meat suit that create all the magic and the beauty here. Otherwise, it would look like this. It would just be black and white and we're in a cube. So really, it is your eyes. It is your meat suit that creates the magic that creates the beauty. You are the beauty. So the Satan uh, and his angels, Satanal was the name of this being, would not bow down to humanity. They were angry and they were jealous. They were incredibly envious of our meat suits. And they found the women of earth very beautiful. So they came down and raped them. <laughs> you know, so it says... <laughs> Uh, corrupt the subsequent corruption of the women of earth read rape okay and that was the race of giants the nephilim that were created and nephilim are still being born today they're really working very hard to keep that race going but you have to have certain dna constructs to create a nephilim and unlike some very popular speakers these giants did not happen because there was a better atmosphere, there was more oxygen. No, it was from rape, okay? And the book of Enoch says that very clearly. So Enoch was one of those beings, and his father apparently uh, was alive during that um, insurrection, it was called. His father was alive. And his father was apparently Jared. And then Enoch was one of these Nephilim. So if we can get conscious that this creation is an artificial creation, a fallen creation, something that was not allowed, and then it was invaded by those beings who are not supposed to be part of it. And the other piece that I wanted to speak about is not only do we have these meat suits, but the other way that we differ from those other dimensional beings, the reptilian beings, is we have souls and they have spirits. So it very clearly says in this book, and she, you know, she still thinks that Sophia is something supreme and divine, but you just have to read it with the eyes that you have now. That those beings in the fifth heaven, the second heaven, all of these prison places called heaven, they have spirits. They do not have souls. So the only way that they could get into the physical was by raping women. So they were incredibly envious of the meat suit. 
And when they did that, they had demonic offspring called giants. Um, the soul, I believe, is also a construct, an artificial construct. And yet, it's kind of like your meat suit. You have to get fully embodied and informed and conscious pull back all those fragmented pieces of soul because, and I've said this before, and my friend, um, one of my clients who is also my friend, Tom, sent this to me because in my blogs that were all taken down, I said that what's happening to humanity is the soul is getting fractured and fragmented so much that there's like dead parts of you in these various boxes, these cubes, and they're screaming, they're crying for you to integrate them, to get that back. And the only person I've ever seen on the Jeff Mara show who was for real seems to be, be Lauda Leon. And she said when she was 13 in her first near-death experience, she got to the void, the demons couldn't get her, and yet then she felt this magnetic pull. And then that magnetic pull like pulled her back with velocity. I haven't talked to Lauda. I haven't listened to any more of her work other than 21 minutes, you know, on the Jeff Mara show. Um, Mara me means the worshiper of Marduk, by the way, which is another reptilian being. But Lauda... Um, she got magnetically, like with velocity, sucked back. And I do believe that is because if they can get a part of your physical meat suit or your soul, they can summon you. Summoning is something that's explained in those angel ology books, but also just think about summoning. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. So from a shamanic perspective, Say you want to summon your dead horse. I'm just going to, I have to get really graphic like this, folks. What you do is you get some bones or some hair from your dead horse. And you call upon that being. And it's, I mean, me saying this is kind of scary for me to say this um, because I don't like any of this black magic stuff. But you do a ceremony, you make offerings, you call by holding a piece, a part, of that animal that is deceased. That's why they bury people in cemeteries. They're holding their souls. They're holding their bones. They can summon them. So yes, the soul is a construct of this place. But I truly believe that you have to get fully embodied, get all your parts back, and then get out of here. Exit through the void. Make sure that there are no parts in those boxes screaming out for your attention. And I also believe that's why some of us came back. Some of us came back to make sure that we had all of our parts and then maybe we came back for a partner. And this is the last time we can do that because this then becomes a dead matrix and they're creating another matrix. So this matrix I believe we made like a third level of a simulation here to come back and get all our parts because once they close down that matrix, that cube remains holding all of those dead soul parts of yours. So I believe we made another level. We realized that the singularity was coming in this matrix and we came back to get all of our parts so they could not get us into this cloud environment with this demonic mother Sophia. So just deprogram yourself from all of these things being called gods and goddesses. They are not. That is not where we are. The spirit that you are, the consciousness, really when it comes down to it, your consciousness that you are, has to apply itself to realize everything is a trick here everything. And those speakers who can manage to keep their website up and their all their platforms are working and they never get censored, you have to wonder, how can they get a book published? How do they get so many um, algorithm uh, pu pushes to be heard? It's because they're 
they're twisting the information. Now I see weird stuff on uh, the Jeff Mara show about, oh, that the simulation's going to end and that we're all here for a big, huge celebration that the simulation's going to end. I think that is a complete um, <laughs> mind wipe. I mean, that's just like the rapture. Oh, God's coming. We're all going to go up into the cloud. Who's God? This demon thing and her arconic creations. My feeling is we've got to collapse this whole thing because what it does is it just boxes you up into another dead matrix and creates another matrix. So we're the food and the fuel for this matrix. So I'm going to read to you what it says about Sophia's creation. And there's all kinds of ridiculous words like organic light and elegance and baloney, baloney. This woman was completely not responsible in her creation. So it says, to her astonishment, Sophia re realizes that she is now the mother of a bizarre species that has emerged from the Dema due to the impact of her divine currents, but without her divine intention. Such the, is the weird consequence of her precipitous plunge from the cosmic center. But now something even more odd occurs. Sophia sees a distinct mutation in the Archon swarm. So the Archons existed long before Sophia did this, and they enter the swarm, okay? The distinct mutation in the Archon Swarm, an aggressive figure appears, a dragon body with the head of a lion that rages and roars. The reptile-like mutation of the Archon Horde rapidly dominates the embryonic creatures and assumes the role of an overlord. That's the god in the Bible, okay? The entire Archon colony comes alive with the reptilian overlord assuming a godlike stance over the rest of the species. The overlord of the Archon species rapidly becomes conscious of himself and his surroundings. He prances and preens before the swarming horde that has arisen from the fracture pattern of Sophia's impact. So again, the template is fractured. It's the fracture that she has surrounded herself around. He is blind. He is blind arrogance embodied, just like Sophia. She was arrogantly creating without divine intention. And he is truly blind. He's blind arrogance and he's truly blind. So stop creating blindly, people. That's the template here. Look around. The chief archon does not see the Pleroma or the Anthropos, nor does he even see Sophia. This monster, the Demiurge, takes the impact zone for the entire cosmos and declares himself to be the Lord of all he surveys. I am the only God. Let there be no others before me. Or he's going to friggin' smote them, right? The Archon Overlord is delusional, believing that he has created an elementary cosmos in which he finds himself along with the countless minions of the embryonic Archons. Sophia realizes, after the fact, there is something terribly odd underway. Here she beholds a cosmic species propag propagated by mistake that does not have a proper habitat for itself. So then what does she do? She then creates a habitat for this monster thing, but it's a copy. It's called a stereoma, S-T-E-R-O-M-A. So not a pleroma, not a proper divine current, but something that is a copy of that. The archons cannot swirl around the Dima vortex forever. A more stable environment must be provided for them. 
The chief archon wants a kingdom to reflect his false omnipotence and arrogant impulses. And Sophia import, imparts a portion of her dreaming power to this chief archon so that he can then see the Pleroma and then he commands his legion of celestial drones to imitate the fractal designs and he proceeds to organize fantastic celestial mansions for himself. The Gnostic texts clearly state that this Jehovah is the Lord Archon. It clearly states it is a reptilian type alien predator who dominates the hive mentality of the embryonic or gray aliens. And I wrote all about the grays from the Orion stars, uh, Rigel. The, the, they're called the Zeta Regalians in my blogs. Yes, it's gone. It's not coming back. So these gray aliens, Jehovah, who is also called Yaldabaoth, is an extraterrestrial being. He is not an advanced being. He is not more evolved than the humans, but a demented alien with superhuman deific powers. The Gnostics taught that Jehovah infects humanity with the belief. He infects humanity. The whole Bible is an infection, people. He infects humanity with the belief that he is their creator God, and yet he cannot create anything. Jehovah slash Yaldabaoth is the commander of the Archon species. So this goes on and on ad nauseum, where she then feels, Sophia then has compassion for the plight of the Archons and their overlord, the Demiurge. They are a blind, rabid species swarming without intention. So Sophia again imparts her power through her dreaming to mimic, the word is mimic, the divine design of the generators of the Pleroma in a construct with celestial ma uh, mansions that the Archons can find a stable world. So this is an Archonic heaven is a simulation of Pleromic design. The mere scaffolding of a clockwork mechanism, majestic on its own terms, but rigid and lifeless. The inorganic world system of the Archons is subject to the influence of other cosmic forces in the region of the galactic limb where it arises. Let's look again at what that looks like. The galactic rim has all of these structures that are copies of a true creation. Okay, we're in one little area that is fixed. It goes on and on, this book. And if you read it with the discernment and consciousness that you have now, it's about we're experiencing a world at this very moment that is a highly sophisticated version of a virtual reality computer game, except that for the vast majority of humans, the game is playing them. So the game is playing them because they don't realize where we are and that the thing that calls itself God is a demon and the mother of that thing is also an irresponsible feminine being who self-fertilizes. So if that's the template, we have to collapse it. We have to stop giving birth because the stuff that's coming down the line for these kids, they're not going to transcend it. They're not going to evolve from it. You know, I was told by a client who chose not to have a session with me that I'm blaming the parents I'm not blaming anyone. I'm saying be conscious of where we are and the planetary transits that are coming and have been happening since 1994, 1995, 1996. So yes, my older daughter has this too. The rape templates. They are rape templates, just like the invasion called 
the Slavonic apocalypse and the angelic insurrection that took place, the prisoners of the second heaven are in fact those watchers who violated the barrier separating heaven and earth and taking human wives, fathering bastards, read giants. So we've been invaded, we've been used as food and fuel, and it's up to us to collapse this, to exit it. You are the glitch in the matrix. You have to understand where we are. You have to realize the consciousness that you are. We are the gold that the Anunnaki are mining. How the heck we got here, I'm not sure. But there were apparently two different atoms. There was an atom that was totally, like, would not... Uh, the Adamic story where Satan and his angels refused to bow, bow down to the first human. And then they created another Adam. So what we are is we're put in these meat suits. We're probably hijacked from other star systems by the spider beings is my feeling. And then we're put into these meat suits and we're imprisoned here as food and fuel to these archons. It comes from an irresponsible mother template that allows the rape. Okay. The coming planetary transits are about rape, okay? Saturn and Nessus are coming together. Pluto is going to be an Aquarius. So there's another rape invasion planned. Um, please act responsibly. Stop thinking of Sophia as a goddess. Okay, my disc is getting full. We're at 4150. Um, doing the best that I can to impart as quickly as possible that Sophia is the mother of the Demiurge. She's not my mother. And if there's any light I can bring to this situation, which is allegedly what we were created for, or born for, or hijacked here for, is that I'm going to shut this whole thing down. It's a horrible game, and I'm not playing it anymore. Thanks for watching.